The crackling of the campfire filled the stillness of the night as I sat huddled with my friends deep in the heart of the ominous woods. The moon was just a sliver in the inky sky. The air was thick with a bone-chilling cold, and the only solace against the encroaching darkness was the warmth of the flickering flames. We had ventured into these woods to escape the mundane routines of our lives, seeking adventure and excitement. Our group consisted of five close friends. Little did we know, the woods held a sinister secret that would change our lives forever. Our first night was uneventful, filled with laughter and stories around the campfire. The ominous feeling that had settled over us seemed like nothing more than an overactive imagination. That was until the second night. As the campfire crackled and embers danced into the inky void, we heard a peculiar noise from the depths of the forest. It was faint at first, barely audible over the rustling leaves and chirping crickets. But as the seconds ticked by, it grew louder and more disturbing. It was a guttural, otherworldly moan that sent shivers down our spines. We exchanged uneasy glances, our faces illuminated by the fire's glow. What was that? Emily whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know, but it's probably just some animal, Mike said, trying to sound confident. But his eyes betrayed his unease. We tried to dismiss the eerie noise as the wind or an animal, but it persisted, growing closer and more menacing with each passing minute. Sarah clutched my arm tightly, her knuckles turning white. I could feel the fear emanating from her. Then, out of the darkness, emerged a figure. It was a tall, shadowy silhouette that moved with an unnatural grace. It glided towards us, its movements fluid and unsettling. Panic seized my heart as I realized that whatever this thing was, it was not human. I reached for a flashlight and shone it in the direction of the approaching figure. My heart skipped a beat when the light revealed its grotesque form. It had elongated limbs, gnarled and twisted, with fingers that resembled claws. Its eyes glowed an eerie shade of red, and its mouth opened impossibly wide, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. We screamed in terror, scrambling to our feet. The creature let out another unearthly moan, a sound that echoed through the forest, and then it lunged towards us with blinding speed. I felt a searing pain in my shoulder as its claws grazed me, but adrenaline fueled my escape. We ran blindly through the dark woods, branches snapping beneath our frantic footsteps. Behind us, the creature pursued with relentless determination. We could hear its haunting moans, growing louder and more terrifying as it closed in on us. We stumbled upon an old, dilapidated cabin in the heart of the forest. Desperation forced us to seek refuge inside. The air was stale, and the walls were adorned with strange symbols and crude drawings. It was clear that this cabin had not been inhabited by sane individuals. We barricaded ourselves inside, our breaths heavy and labored. The moans of the creature grew louder, and it scratched at the walls, trying to break in. Sarah was trembling, tears streaming down her face, and I held her close, trying to offer whatever comfort I could. Hours passed, though it felt like an eternity. The creature outside seemed to have lost interest, but we dared not make a sound. The symbols on the cabin walls seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, and we realized that we were trapped in a place far more sinister than the forest itself. As dawn broke, we cautiously ventured out of the cabin, the forest now eerily quiet. We decided to make our way back to civilization, leaving behind the cursed woods that held such malevolent secrets. Our camping trip had turned into a nightmare beyond our darkest imaginations. We never spoke of that night to anyone, fearing that no one would believe our harrowing tale. But the horror of those woods stayed with us, etching itself into our nightmares. We were forever changed by our encounter with the creature in the woods, a nightmarish experience that would haunt us for the rest of our lives. I've always been an avid hiker, drawn to the wild and uncharted beauty of the gray outdoors. But one chilling encounter in the woods forever changed the way I looked at nature, leaving me with a lingering sense of terror that still haunts my nightmares. It happened during a solo hiking trip in the remote wilderness of the Pacific Northwest. I had chosen a trail that wound deep into the heart of an ancient forest, its towering trees creating a canopy so thick that even the midday sun struggled to penetrate. The silence was eerie, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves or the distant cry of a bird. 
as I ventured further into the woods, an uneasiness settled over me. The forest seemed alive, as if it was watching me, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. I brushed it off as nerves, convincing myself it was just the isolation playing tricks on my mind. Hours passed, and I lost track of time as I navigated the winding trail. Suddenly, I stumbled upon a clearing bathed in an otherworldly light. In the center of the clearing stood a creature, unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It was a tall, emaciated figure, hunched over with elongated limbs and covered in matted, dirty fur. Its head resembled that of a wolf, with sharp, gleaming eyes that locked onto mine with an unsettling intensity. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as the creature regarded me with an eerie intelligence. Inexplicably, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread, as if this creature was an embodiment of evil itself. It seemed to beckon me closer, and my feet moved against my will, taking me a step closer to the monster. Panic surged through me, and I fought to regain control of my body. That's when I heard a voice, soft and melodic, coming from behind me. It called my name, and I turned to see a figure standing at the edge of the clearing. It was a man, or at least it appeared to be one. His features were distorted, as if his face was a grotesque mask. His eyes were a piercing yellow, and a wicked grin spread across his face. He spoke again, this time in a voice that sent shivers down my spine. Come, traveler, he hissed. Join us. The creature and the man began to advance on me, and I stumbled backward, finally breaking free of the paralysis that had held me. Adrenaline surged through my veins as I turned and fled, crashing through the underbrush, not daring to look back. As I ran, I could hear the pursuit behind me. The man's voice echoed through the trees, now sounding like a chorus of sinister laughter. The creature's footsteps were close, the sound of its heavy breathing growing louder with each passing moment. My heart pounded in my chest, and I pushed myself to keep running, to put as much distance as possible between me and those nightmarish entities. The forest around me seemed to close in, the trees twisting and contorting, as if they were trying to hinder my escape. After what felt like an eternity, I burst out of the woods and onto a gravel road. I didn't stop running until I reached a nearby ranger station. Breathless and terrified, I recounted my harrowing encounter to the ranger on duty. He listened gravely, his expression growing more somber with each detail I shared. When I mentioned the creature with the wolf-like head and the man with the distorted features, the ranger's eyes widened in recognition. You encountered a skinwalker, he whispered. He went on to explain that skinwalkers were malevolent beings from Native American folklore, capable of shape-shifting into animals and manipulating the minds of those they encountered. They were said to be powerful and dangerous, and encounters with them were exceedingly rare. The ranger warned me never to return to that part of the woods and advised me to seek the protection of a medicine man to cleanse myself of any lingering malevolent energy. I left the ranger station with a deep sense of unease, haunted by the memory of that chilling encounter. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that the skinwalker and the distorted man are still out there, lurking in the shadows of the ancient forest, waiting for their next unsuspecting victim. I couldn't believe my luck when my friends and I decided to take a ski vacation at a remote resort tucked away in the Rocky Mountains. It was the perfect opportunity to escape the stress of our daily lives and enjoy some quality time together. Little did I know that this vacation would turn into a nightmarish encounter with something beyond our understanding, something that still haunts my dreams to this day. We arrived at the ski resort on a crisp winter morning, greeted by a pristine landscape covered in a fresh blanket of snow. The lodge was cozy, with a roaring fireplace and wooden beams that gave it a rustic charm. We couldn't wait to hit the slopes and enjoy the winter wonderland. The first few days of our vacation went off without a hitch. We skied during the day, sipped hot cocoa by the fire at night, and regaled each other with stories and laughter. It was the perfect vacation. But everything changed one fateful night. It was the fifth night of our stay, and a heavy snowfall had forced us to stay indoors. We decided to make the most of it and planned to have a movie night in our cabin. As the evening turned into night, we settled in with popcorn and a stack of DVDs. The wind howled outside, adding to the eerie ambience of our surroundings. About halfway through the second movie, I noticed something outside the window. 
A flicker of movement caught my eye, and I dismissed it as a trick of my imagination. But then I saw it again, a shadowy figure moving between the trees. I couldn't make out any details, but it appeared to be human-like. I whispered to my friends, drawing their attention to the window. They all looked, and we exchanged puzzled glances. One of my friends, Sarah, suggested it might be another vacationer who got lost in the storm. Concerned, we decided to investigate. We bundled up in our warmest clothes and grabbed flashlights before heading out into the snowstorm. The wind howled around us, and the visibility was terrible. We called out, hoping to find the lost person and offer assistance. But as we ventured further into the woods, a sense of unease washed over us. That's when we heard it, a chilling, inhuman scream that pierced through the howling wind. Our hearts raced as we followed the sound deeper into the forest. The scream seemed to be getting closer, and panic set in as we realized it was not human. It was an otherworldly, guttural cry that sent shivers down our spines. As we rounded a bend in the trees, our flashlights illuminated something that will forever haunt my nightmares. It was a creature, unlike anything I had ever seen. Its body was hunched and emaciated, covered in matted, grayish-brown fur. Its limbs were unnaturally long, ending in twisted, claw-like hands. But the most terrifying aspect of this creature was its face, a grotesque, distorted mask that seemed to be a mockery of human features. The creature locked its yellow, predatory eyes onto us, and we were paralyzed with fear. It let out another ear-piercing scream, sending us scrambling backward in terror. We could feel its malevolence, and it was clear that we were not dealing with anything remotely human. In our panic, we stumbled and fell, losing sight of the creature. We knew we had to get back to the safety of the lodge, and we ran as fast as we could, fueled by pure adrenaline. The wind howled louder, and the snow seemed to fall heavier as if nature itself was conspiring against us. When we finally reached the lodge, we slammed the door shut and barricaded it with any furniture we could find. We were safe, for the time being, but we couldn't shake the feeling that the creature was still out there, lurking in the darkness. We spent the rest of the night huddled together, clutching our flashlights and praying that the morning light would bring safety. We didn't sleep a wink, haunted by the memory of that abominable creature and the horrifying screams that echoed in our minds. When dawn finally broke, we cautiously ventured outside, half expecting to see traces of the creature or footprints in the snow. But there was nothing. It was as if the nightmare from the previous night had never happened. We reported the incident to the resort staff, but they dismissed it as a wild animal sighting. They assured us that such creatures didn't exist, and it must have been a bear or a wolf. But we knew what we had seen was no ordinary animal. We packed our bags that day and left the resort, cutting our vacation short. We never spoke of the encounter again, and even now, I can't help but wonder what that creature was and why it had targeted us. The memory of that ski resort vacation will forever be etched in my mind as a nightmarish encounter with a skinwalker, a creature that defied explanation and left us with a terror that still lingers to this day.